Hi, my name is Søren, and in this video, we will take a look at the graph view. The graph view allows the interpolation between keys to be customized. When a key is selected in the dope sheet, the graph shows how the value will change from the selected key to the next key. The graph will appear empty if no key is selected in the dope sheet, if there is no key after the selected key, or the selected key doesn't support interpolation curves, such as event keys. The x-axis on the graph represents the time between keys. The left edge of the graph is the timeline position of the selected key. The right edge of the graph is the timeline position of the key after the selected key. When only a single key is selected, the cyan vertical line indicates the current timeline position. The y-axis on the graph represents the change in value between keys. The bottom edge of the graph is the value of the selected key and the top edge of the graph is the value of the key after the selected key. The colored line between the bottom left corner and upper right corner shows how the value changes over time from the selected key to the next key. The curve type determines how the value is interpolated between frames. The curve types available are linear keys, Bezier keys, and stepped keys. Let's take a look at the different types. Linear is the default curve type and results in a linear interpolation between key values. This means the value changes at a constant rate when the timeline position moves from the first key to the second key. The Bezier curve type uses a Bezier curve to interpolate between key values. A Bezier curve has two handles that can be dragged to customize the rate at which the value between keys changes. Here in the graph, we can see the value does not change much at first, then changes a lot as the timeline position gets closer to the next key. And here we have a graph where the value changes a lot at first, and then changes more slowly as the timeline position gets closer to the next key. Note that Bezier handles can be dragged below 0% or above 100%, allowing you to overshoot the original key values. Bezier curves are useful for when you want to create nonlinear motion without creating additional linear keys. Here we have Spineboy running with linear keys set on his hip, which makes the up and down motion on his body appear stiff. With Bezier curves, we get a more natural motion. As the body moves up, it slows down when nearing the apex and then picks up speed while moving down again. Last, we have the stepped curve. The stepped curve does not use interpolation at all. That means the value does not change until the next key is reached. This can be useful when you don't want to have any interpolation between your keys. Here step keys are used on the light on the side of Spineboy's hoverboard so it doesn't look like the light is moving, but instead get the appearance that individual lights are being turned on and off in sequence. When a new key is created, it is normally given the curve defined by the preset. However, if a key is placed between keys that are using Bezier or stepped, then the new key is assigned a Bezier step curve instead. When this is done for Bezier, the curve of both the previous key and the new key is adjusted to match the old key as closely as possible. This allows new keys to be added in the middle of an animation without losing the interpolation curves. When multiple keys are selected, the first selected key is drawn as normal and can be changed, but the other keys are drawn in grey. When match is enabled, modifying the curve type or moving the Bezier curve handles will modify all the selected keys to match the first selected key. For example, with match enabled, if I first select one key and then select another, the second selected key will match the first selected key once I start manipulating the Bezier handles.
Selecting a curve in the preset section of the graph view applies it to any selected keys. While a preset is selected, changing the curve or curve type in the graph view updates the preset. Presets are added and removed using the plus and minus buttons and may be renamed by double clicking the preset. I hope this video has been helpful and I hope to see you again for the next one. Bye for now.